Witchlings, it's me, your local chaotic witch on, and welcome back to my channel. Today we are talking about the basics of creating an altar. So as you'll notice, there's some stuff missing from my normal background. This is because I'm getting ready to move, and I had to take my altars apart, I had to pack up a bunch of stuff, there's stuff everywhere. Um, so basically when creating alt an altar, what you are creating is a couple of things. You're creating possibly a working space for your magic, you're creating a sacred space, a place of power, and you're possibly creating a devotional to different spirits that you work with or deities. There are a few questions I usually ask people before um, they create an altar, and that is what makes you feel magical, what makes you feel, you know, tied into your practice and your craft. Um, are there any deities that you want to devote a space to? Are there any ancestors or spirits or saints you want to devote a space to? And um, how much space do you have? Because let's be honest, not everyone has room for elaborate altars and a lot of people don't have families that would be okay with them having a great display of altars. So we're going to touch on that, especially travel altars in a little bit. Um, so when creating an altar space, what you want to do is you can start by dedicating an area to it. This can be a tabletop, it can be a room, it can be a part of your room. You want to start by cleansing it, protecting it, and setting intentions with it. I like to cleanse with a nice protective herb. I will cleanse it with rue cologne or a kind of water, St. John's water, um, and I will draw sigils, on, protective sigils, on the space with this water to kind of set that in, and I set intentions. I will maybe energetically connect it to something. Um, my past altars have been connected to the moon, the sun, to charge. Um, I do recommend cleaning and recharging your altar every month. Um, but think of anything that ties you to your spirituality, that makes you feel very in touch with your craft. It can be crystals, it can be rocks, it can be bones, wands, sticks, whatever. And you're going to place that on the altar in any which way you choose. Um, the idea is, what do you want your ideal altar to look like? And is it possible for you to have that I ideal altar now? If not, um, how are you able to set it up or is there a way for you to work towards that ideal altar? For me, my altar very much started um, with just a bowl of rice for incense, crystals, rocks, spell jars, a railroad spike, and candles. From there it evolved to heavily a space heavily devoted to deities, um, so like candles for a bunch of deities. Um, it would be Freya, Nath, uh, Artemis, Apollo, they've all had spaces on my altar at a certain point. And now, my altar typically looks like, especially, especially my working and devotional altar, looks like a space for the spirits I work with, animal spirits, plant spirits, um, my two deities, Diana and Lucifero on either side and from there a space in the center for me to work with. I only have a couple crystals out, ones that I feel would benefit by protecting the space or ones that I really enjoy like green aventurine, selenite, um, usually have a lot of black tourmaline out. I will have crystals devoted to each deity um, and when you're starting out if you don't have a specific tradition or path, your altar can look like whatever it wants. Some certain traditions or paths, like the Wiccan tradition, have a very specific way of setting up their altar. Um, and, you know, that your altar will look different depending on those traditions that you're a part of. For your ancestral and saint altar, I recommend keeping deities and ancestors separate. That's just a word of advice. You just want a white candle, a glass of water, you can put photos of your ancestors there, you can put things that tie them, tie you to them there. Um, for me, I always make sure there's enough room for food and drink for them on that altar, and I will have saint candles or saint cards there as well, things that connect me to my ancestry. I will typically have a treasury of novenas, um, rosaries, um, things that, because my ancestors were Italian. Catholic. So, Catholic items. <laughs> um, 
from there, that's kind of what an ancestor and saint altar look like. I also have an altar to self, which is just a space where I put things that I love and I do my spell work to myself there. I started that because I'm taking a 13 month witch course at Cat and Cauldron. I take it online. Um, and I made the altar to self because of that class. I'm actually going to make a video once I'm done with this whole 13 month class and talk about my experiences there. Um, but we still have a while to go. <laughs> still have a while. Um, this altar is a space for you. And, and, and obviously if you have deities or ancestors, it's a space for them too. Um, if you don't have space for an altar right now or you don't feel comfortable making an altar, there are a few different options. I'm going to show you some of those options. This is my altar right now. It is a bag of things. Um, I have some protection bags in here, some crystals, this is a tin of rosemary, uh, I have some bones, I have my fox skull in here, and I have a bag of herbs from my room, I have a oil in here, and this is going to be my travel altar that I carry with me while I'm moving. Um, there's a lot in here. I do have some bags of crystals and rocks. I brought my rosaries with me. Um, and I probably will be taking my treasury of novenas as well. If you don't have room for a box, you can set it up. So if you have like a space like this with shelves or a drawer, you can set up kind of a space within that drawer on that shelf that's easily hideable and you can close it. Obviously, if you are worried about your safety as a broom closet witch, don't do anything that's going to put that in the way. I don't want anyone to get kicked out. That's important. And creating a sacred space doesn't have to be this elaborate altar. It can be you charge and cleanse your room and your room becomes a place for you to meditate, etc. The whole idea with a place of power is a place that you continuously do spell work or meditation over and over again to the point where it becomes charged heavily. So for me, my whole room is like that. Even though I have specific spots like the altars, my whole room is cleansed and charged and has become a place of power over years and years of casting in it. You can take a small tin or a box and put a little, little bit of stuff in there. I usually do that while traveling too. My tin is currently at the bottom with a bunch of jars in it. And even then, something that you can grab that holds everything. Yeah, perfect. Um, for me, when I do my travel altar, I will grab things that I feel very connected to, crystals that I feel like protect me, as well as something that I associate with each of my deities. So I have a deer antler tip in there. Um, I have a deer antler tip, which represents both of them. I also have... Um, a few other objects that I associate or dedicated or devoted to Diana. I wear jewelry for her every day. <laughs> um, but an altar and creating a sacred space doesn't have to look like those crazy Pinterest photos where it's like a giant fur and then 300 candles and like it doesn't have to look like that. It can look like whatever you want. Sometimes your altar can just be like your desk. So continuing our conversation of altars, <laughs> I had to take a break. Those kind of five or four questions are the main things to take into consideration. What's important to you? What's important to your deities if you work with any? What's important to your ancestors and how many space, how much space do you have? Like I already said, if you um, are in the closet or don't have the capability to make an altar a bag, works great for like a travel altar. You can also, like I said, use a tin. Um, and sometimes I've seen altars that are very much just a couple of objects that make the person feel connected with their craft and their space or a couple of objects connected to their deities. Um, for Diana, you know, I have a spearhead I'll be carrying with me because she's a huntress. Um, You can even decorate it with plants. I've had altars um, on windowsills. I've had altars on desks. I've had altars that are just a couple crystals in my tarot cards. I've had altars that are like bowls for my deities and no candles. They really can be anything that you want. And while there are a lot of really, really great examples of altars online, 
you don't want to compare yourself to other people's spaces because your space is it is personal for you just like your practice is personal for you so instead of well not saying that you can't not saying that you can't look online for inspiration on what kind of altars and objects you may be interested in, but a lot of times you don't need to buy a lot of fancy materials to create an altar space. All you need are some things that you have, maybe have collected from nature behind me. There's a pile of objects that I have collected over my years um, that I won't be taking with me on my move that I'm going to be returning to the earth. It's like I have a part of a tree, um, dried flowers, rocks, I have multiple sticks, um, there are a few other things, I think I have tree bark as well, walnuts, I've just collected things over my years and used them as integral parts of my altar, even um, I have a rock shaped like a triangle that I've kept since I was in high school to put on like put under um, my main altar piece and it's been a part of that a part of my sacred space for ages um, these things don't have to look you know like a traditional cloth and an athame and a bowl and like a chalice it can be just objects you already have access to that are important to you um, a lot of altars may, you know, contain something like a tool, for me it's scissors, a wand, pendulums, tarot cards, which we briefly talked about. Some contain books, some can be formed as kind of like a bookshelf for your witch books and then the altar underneath. It really depends on your idea of a sacred space, is what, what is sacred to you? Do you want to be able to grab books off the shelf and reference them? Do you want a lot of space to do intricate spells? Do you want it to be mainly devotional? Do you want it to be small and compact? These are all things to take in mind when you're building your altar. And most of all, you know, what do you, ha what do you have access to? Like I said before, you don't need to buy a lot of things for an altar. This altar is for you. If you don't have access to something like, um, a lot of fancy crystals, that's okay. You don't need to put them on your altar. If you want to get fancy crystals, you can. I'm not going to stop you. But it's something to keep in mind. Um, I'm going to compile a list of different types of altars um, below if you're interested. So like a Wiccan altar, a traditional witchcraft altar, etc. Um, all down below for you to leisurely look at. Oh, also, on the day that I post this video, which is tomorrow, <laughs> Um, Friday. I will post on Instagram a bunch of pictures of my altar so you can kind of see how my altar has changed and what it has looked like over the years. Reminder, I am an eclectic folk practitioner learning Italian folk magic. I work with deities. Um, and yeah, I hope this helps you to create the space that you are dreaming of and to create a safe sacred space for you to practice your craft. Overall, what's important is what you want your altar to look like. Um, you can take inspiration from others, but this is your sacred space and make it look how you want it. If you have any questions, you can leave it down in the comments. Um, if you want, you can like, subscribe, turn the bell on, but no pressure. And I hope you have a great rest of your day. Sabanadika.